Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be doing an overview of a star tracker that was introduced to me back at the last Practical Astronomy show and that I recently used and had first hands on at a recent star party at Kelling Heath. So I'm going to fill you in all about this amazing piece of kit and hopefully it may be of interest to you. So my name's Glenn and you're watching Astrobloke. As I said, this thing was introduced to me initially by the creator Andre at the Practical Astronomy show hosted by Altair Astro uh, this year, earlier this year. And it's uh, a star tracker called the OG Star Tracker, and it's a 3D printed tracker basically. And it's an open source piece of equipment, which means all of the prints are available online. So if you wanted to print this and build it yourself, you can. You can buy this directly from uh, Andre or from Altair Astro and it comes fully built for £199 at the moment. One of the first things I noticed about the tracker when I got my hands on it was how sturdy it is. I've put a ball head on the top here and I've attached it to a tripod. But even though it's a 3D print, it's a very, very solid piece of equipment and it's very sturdy. It weighs 1.4 kilograms. This is version two. I believe version one was a bit heavier. So they've made it a bit smaller, a bit lighter but it can carry a payload of up to four kilograms, which is quite impressive. Now, when you put a camera on this, you can see how sturdy it is. So it's a really nice wedge. And here I've got a Canon 6D uh, full frame camera. On here I've got a Samyang 14 mm uh, lens, and I've even got the battery pack on the bottom with two batteries in it. So this can be quite a weighty unit um, and if we put it on there, you can see that yeah, you know, it's holding it fairly firmly. It really does work extremely well. And once we've got the unit polar aligned, we can undo the ball head and move the camera to whatever target we want. And then this is gonna track away and keep everything moving nicely in line with the rotation of the earth. Um, I've got a little addition on here that most brewery looks a little bit strange. Um, one of my good friends showed me this at Kelling and I went and bought one. I've got a link in my description if you want to see something similar. But basically it clamps onto your camera. These are normally quite expensive. I think this was around the 54 pound mark. But what it allows you to do is uh, if you want to go from landscape to portrait, you literally undo the knob there and it will just rotate round. And this is so much easier than trying to do it through the ball head. I've tried many times, you know, you get the little gap here, you try and tip it, it doesn't quite go the full vertical. It's very cumbersome. So this little uh, clamp unit 
which gives you that ability really simply to just rotate the camera into portrait and away you go and again of course you've got your ball head now I can now again aim this wherever I want and uh, if I undo it properly and away I can go with my imaging so let's talk about polar aligning of the OG Star Trek I'm just going to take this camera off for now to make things easier for me to show you what I'm doing um, you've got a few choices of polar alignment you've got a small mount on the side here that you can put a polar scope in he does provide a small red LED light to help illuminate it um, but I'm not sure I'm not sure how well that would work I didn't try that part out you can drop a small green laser or red laser in here which would point at Polaris and then that would get you a good polar alignment. But the method that I've used with it that I find works extremely well is an astronomy app called PS Align Pro, which stands for Poloscope Align Pro. I will put links in my description for a download, so check them out. But basically, I'll start the app, but what I'll do is I will record my screen so that you can see what's going on. So it's called PS Align Pro. You make sure that you've got your location details in there and everything's right. And then there's a daytime polar alignment on the screen. But I'll show you that here. If I turn this unit so it's roughly facing north and I put the phone on there, you'll get a crosshair showing where north is. So you can get a rough alignment by moving the tripod and now I can actually see I'm very close actually to polar alignment and then the controls I think are brilliant on this little tracker they're so fine um, you can really make adjustments quite quickly and they and it really does it's the, the threads on the screws are nice and fine so it doesn't jump or go too far or anything and I have literally polar aligned that to what I would need for a tracker. I mean, if I'm using my Canon 6D here and I'm doing, say, some Milky Way shots and I've got the 14 mil Samyang on there, um, with, you know, 30 second shots without a tracker are more than capable without having star trails. So a sort of fairly good polar alignment. You can easily get one to two minute shots without having any star trails. And this, without doubt, is the easiest way to get that polar alignment. It's not difficult at all. And um, it's got a night mode as well. So it's all there. Um, and as I say, that for me works brilliantly. It's no problem at all. And then you can lock it down nice and firmly. And that will stay in polar alignment and give you really good tracking. And that's nice and easy how you get that polar aligned. Um, I did this method while at Kelling Heath and had the phone uh, in the daytime getting it polar aligned, got the camera on there and I took some, basically I tracked the Milky Way through the night, um, taking I think 45 second shots with an intervalometer uh, with a 5 second interval. I turned that into a star trail which you can see here and then I stacked all of the shots and ended up with a really nice Milky Way uh, at the end of the night. Now I have not experimented a lot with this. Um, I think there's a lot more I can do with it and I'm looking forward to some more clear skies so I can actually try it out a bit more. So to power the OG Star Tracker, you've got a five volt in at the bottom there, which is USB-C. Now I like to use uh, these DTAP batteries. I have these on my tripods. They'll power everything from the dew heater to, you know, uh, the, the actual Star Tracker itself and anything else that you're putting on there. So I think they're, they're a great way to uh, power a rig. It's nice and tidy. Um, and, it, and it clamps to the actual uh, tripod, which keeps everything out the way. Um, again, I've got links in my descriptions of the ones I've got here that I use, so you can have a look at them. I've just bought them from Amazon. Uh, so basically, plug the D-tap in. As soon as you plug this in, 
the uh, star tracker will power up and it will go green and that lets you know that it's tracking um, and the DTAP batteries you can get them at all different kinds of capacities but so this is quite a small one which is a 50 watt hour um, newer DTAP battery and this basically ran all night um, and also powered the dew band as well um, you can get also DTAP outputs to go into a dummy battery into your camera so you could get this to run the whole rig uh, which saves you having to worry about <coughs> camera batteries and all other things that you've got to plug in the tracker does have its own Wi-Fi with the star tracker on if we go to our settings we can actually connect to a Wi-Fi so you'll see it come up in your list as OG star tracker that's its own Wi-Fi if we connect to that Wi-Fi and then go to any browser and type in OG tracker dot local and that should connect you to the star tracker there we go and we're in um, and we can see here we can change the hemisphere from north to south we've got the tracking rate so we've got sidereal solar or lunar we can actually turn it off so if I actually switch off the light goes off on the back of the unit switching on turns the light back on there are some slew controls this is obviously universal for other uh, trackers um, we haven't got any go to or slewing but there is a built-in intervalometer and there is a jack on the uh, star tracker so you can plug your for a lead and then you've got an intervalometer here to control your camera so that's quite good we've got some basic controls there off your phone um, it's good that it's all in red so using it in the night time is not going to muck up your night vision which is a great thing um, and it's a nice little addition to have to the tracker so that's built in um, and uh, looks quite good so this, the, the wedge comes with all of the things that you would need you've got your uh, altitude markings here so I'm 52 degrees north um, the, as I say the uh, actual controls for adjustments for polar alignment are really really fine and it's a very solid mount so once you've got it set it's not really going anywhere even with a fairly heavy rig on top um, I have also used and I've got the tracker by move shoot move the nomad which is absolutely fantastic and it's so small just fit in your pocket but it does have a drawback in that when you put a heavy camera on top even with the Z mount there can be a little bit of a wobble so if you've got a little bit of a breeze about it could upset the subs um, I've had great results from it but it's not as sturdy as the OG Star Trekker so if you're looking for something a little bit more robust um, and sturdy this is the one you want to look at so a big feature of this tracker as well is its uh, periodic error uh, we're looking at its accuracy to be between 10 to 15 arc seconds which is very good for a tracker of this price point um, it's going to give you really good results so as you can see I've actually had quite a successful night with the star tracker it did exactly what it's supposed to do and I found it gave me everything I need from a good tracker so a nice sturdy mount uh, for your camera accurate tracking so that you're going to get the subs that you're after um, you know you don't really need a lot more from one um, and this just did a really really good job I think with it being a 3D print it's quite a modular design so there are obviously uh, possibilities in the future to have extra additions or things made for it and I'm pretty sure after speaking to Andre he has many plans that if he can improve on it he'll take feedback if people have come to him with any feedback he'll incorporate it into the tracker I know that this one is the version 2 
and version two was derived from feedback and use in the field. So, so it is developing as they learn how it works. So that is the OG Star Tracker and uh, I've actually think it's a really nice piece of kit and if you're into 3D printing what a fantastic project where you can actually download and print all the parts that you need to put this together. So um, Andre has also put together um, a instruction manual which includes all of the parts and the assembly uh, that's required to put this together. It also includes operational information and also details on how the app works uh, through the Wi-Fi that you can connect to through the tracker. I've uh, only had a short amount of use with it, but I found it to be a very stable uh, tracker. It was very accurate too, no problems at all in that respect and I'm looking forward to doing some more projects with it. Unfortunately, I don't have the weather at the moment, but as soon as it changes, I will get back out with this, and you should see this in some future videos, especially when I venture out um, and do some astrophotography with my DSLR in some locations around and about. So thanks ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe. All of that support is greatly appreciated by me. And if you do like it, or even press the hype button that's available now, if you're on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android, that can help push the video out to a wider audience, which I'm sure they'll appreciate, but I definitely will appreciate. But until next time, please take care and I'd like to wish you all clear skies.